It's a Bobby Bones Show interview. In case you didn't know. Tracy Lawrence coming in studio right now. Time marches on. Time marches on. Paint me a Birmingham. Paint me a Birmingham. Find out who your friends are. You'll find out who your friends are. Alibis. By those alibis. So many jams. He's here now. He's got a new EP called Out Here In It. Six new songs. I love the guy, Tracy Lawrence. Here we go. The Friday Morning Conversation with Tracy Lawrence. Tracy, we were talking about you before you came in. Obviously, as a person, I really like you. But then we're fans of forever. What, do you, what, what is your best song? What's, your, what's the such a vague question? What's your best song? You know, uh, there's a lot of ways to look at that. I'd say personally for me, I'll see it now as one of my favorite songs to sing. But Time Marches On is the best written song that I have. But Paint Me in Birmingham might have been the most impacting song that I had. Mm, all so, those are wrong. It's alibis. <laughs> In case you're wondering the answer, it's alibi. Um, no, all those are great songs. But Amy and I were talking because we were talking about you coming in and we were playing some clips and stuff. And when that hook and alibis hits. Oh, what a good record that was. Mm -hmm. And it just had such a great look to yes. it, too. Just the, the movement of it was very special. You know, a lot of people don't realize that uh, Tracy Bird cut that on his debut record and it got bumped from the album. He had been singing that song at the club. Uh, he was like it, playing at Cutters for years. And uh, they'd been playing that song in the club for a long time. And so his fans were mad at me because they thought I stole his song. The people that knew him from back home in Beaumont. So when that song came out, but they didn't hook it. I mean, we Stroud just cut a great record on that thing. Did you ever hear his version of it? Like the no, studio version? I never heard it, but but he's actually got on stage and sang it with me a few times. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Back in the day, how did fans get mad at you if there wasn't social media to yell? Oh, they they just, uh, you know, they're very protective of their artists that they attach to, especially people that had been following him uh, when he was, before he got to Nashville, he cut that first record, the fans that were that went with him way back. But how would you know? Because they couldn't, like, send you a comment on Instagram. Oh, they you hear like about the, it, though. Oh, okay, oh, like yeah. the Paul Revere. But back then, I did meet and greets <laughs> every night. And people would say that to you? Oh, yeah. I can't believe you stole his song. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do Time Marches On, then. You say best written song. I think that song is like a work of art. If you really look at the message of that song, it's it's talking about multiple generations of a family. To paint that picture and really get all of that imagery across in three and a half minutes, Bobby Braddock wrote that by himself. I mean, it's a masterful piece of work. Still kind of holds up. You know how sometimes yeah. you go watch a TV show and it doesn't hold up? Or, or, or there'll be one from like the late 90s. You're like, man, this would still be good today. That song still kind of holds up and makes you feel the way you felt even back then as well. Without a doubt. Um, where does that go on your set list, Time Marches On? Uh, almost right at the end, right before Birmingham. They're like my last two numbers. Man, if your voice is tired and you got to do that key change and pay me a Birmingham. You know, it's weird, though. I can I can have problems with other songs that are in lower keys. I never have a problem with Birmingham. You're going out doing the headline stuff now. You just finished some Riley Green shows, right? How was that? Awesome. Riley's great. And, and I didn't realize how massive his career is. He's drawing huge yeah. crowds right he's, now. He's killing it. He's killing it. How were his fans with you? Were they super? Were they awesome? They were great. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't have the abs he does. But, <laughs> you know. Bobby Bones. Bobby Bones Show. It's the Bobby Bones Show interview. In case you didn't know. Our friend Tracy Lawrence is in studio right now. Time marches on. Time marches on. Pay me a Birmingham. Pay me a Birmingham. His new EP. It's out now. It's called Out Here In It. All right, back with Tracy Lawrence. The Friday Morning Conversation with Tracy Lawrence. When you moved to town, who were your musical heroes at that age when you moved to Nashville? You got them tattooed on you? George Strait, George Jones, Keith Whitley, Merle Haggard. And how many of them did you get to spend time with? Every one of them but Keith. Keith died the year before I came to town. So, like, did you get to know Lori at all? Oh, yeah, Lori and I are very close. And, and her kids. Lori Morgan, by the way, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, kind, you know, as close as you could have? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and Keith was a big inspiration for me. But I, I spent the most time with Jones. Uh, I awesome. was a bigger Haggard fan than I was with Jones, but Jones was the first tour that I was on in 92 when I went out with Jones for a couple of years. And I got very close to George. Um, was I, he crazy? Was he wild and crazy then, or is it as it cal calmed down? No, he wasn't. Uh, George, kind of, you know, uh, when when I was around him, I think he still took a nip every now and then. But George wasn't drinking the way that he used to. He had kind of got it all under control. Nancy had kind of put the <laughs> the tight grip on him a little bit. But I mean, he was a sweet old grandfather to me. I spent a lot of time with George. One of my favorite memories. It was about three years before George passed, 
and uh, uh, we had gone to Fireside the studio. I don't. I think Fireside's gone now. But Nancy had put some uh, charity project together, and she wanted me and George to do a duet together. And I'd gone in and done my part of the song, and George was there, and he came in, and and George was having trouble. He couldn't see. He couldn't see the lyric, and he couldn't hear the pitch anymore. And he asked me to come in the booth with him, and I and I would sing the line for him and help him go through the whole thing. And, and I look back at that as such a fond thing because I got to share something very special with Jones at a time when he was frail and he was struggling that I don't think anybody else got a chance to do. I got to do something with him that nobody ever got to do. And the fact that he would be vulnerable enough to trust you? Absolutely. Because he could have asked anybody to do yeah. that. It was very special for me. Yeah, that's really cool. You know what was the jam that I feel like sometimes isn't brought up when it's like, this song was great. The old, the older George Jones, I don't need your rocking chair. Oh, yeah. Your Geritol or your Medicare. I still got neon in my veins. Dang, that song was awesome. It was awesome. And you got to think, too, jo and, and it, this inspires me a lot as I've had the ups and downs in my career. You know, George, at that time in the early 90s when everything was taken off, the young country movement was hitting. Radio stations were changing formats. You had, in 89, you had, all, you know, Garth and, and Chestnut and Alan Jackson, Travis Tritt and Vince Gill, and you had that whole barrage, and it was new. Everything was changing. I came to town right after that. And so you had all these guys like Waylon and, and uh, Merle and all that. They were angry that all of a sudden they had been on the charts for 30 or 40 years and now they were getting the records played and they were mad and they were mad at us. I mean, they blamed all of us for it. And uh, I saw George take a different perspective. I saw George cut rock and chair and I saw him take me on tour and Mark Chestnut on tour. And I, I got to spend time with him and he looked at it from a completely different perspective. And he had a whole nother career at that time that none of the rest of them really did. And it made me realize that sometimes you just got to get out of your own way and realize that things change. Uh, you can either grab a hold and be a part of it or you can just get out of the way. And what's amazing about what you just said, and it's not exactly the same because George was older, than you are now, but you're talking about Ernest and these guys. Absolutely. You're doing the same thing. Absolutely. The podcasts and the things that I do to build relationships with all of these younger artists, I'm putting myself in a situation where I can I can have relationships with this generation of artists that I wouldn't have any other way. And I treasure it. I love it. I made a lot of friends that way. I'm not put off by it and I'm not jealous of it. I'm proud for their success. And they're having success that we never had. I mean, it's amazing how big our format is now. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture here. This is you and a very, very, very young Jason Aldean. Oh, yeah. I know he was a huge fan of mine. He's told me that. Greet? Probably. That's crazy. And he's told me uh, that uh, he had my poster on his wall when he was in high school. I was like, dude, I had Farrah Fawcett on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with you. <laughs> There's a picture of you and George we, that it pulled off. Oh, yeah. What what is, do you know what, when this was? Because it, it could have been at any point. You know, that was, that jacket right there is from the tour because it's got the Red Man tobacco logo on it. So that would have been 92. And I used to give him, excuse me, hell about that jacket. He always wore those jackets with that fringe on them. And I like to give him a hard time about his wardrobe selections. <laughs> so, everybody, go to a Tracy show. TracyLawrence.com. Please. Yeah, Tracy's awesome. Yeah. You're a Razorback fan? I am. Yeah. Baseball season was hard this yeah. year. It's, all, it's been a rough year. It's, it's all the way around. It's rough all the way around. So, I have a few friends that are Razorback fans. Um, and so, I have this helmet here. And I'm going to have a bunch of us Razorbackers sign this helmet. Cool. And then I'm going to auction off for NIL so we can have better players. Okay. So, we just, we just sign it we're done here. Absolutely. Okay. Because then we're going to pay for better players. Legally. <laughs> it's worth it. And then we will, yes, that's right. Uh, Tracy, really appreciate you. You guys go to Tracy's Instagram, the real Tracy Lawrence. Do not follow the fake Tracy Lawrence. <laughs> There's a bunch of them. He, or even at the fake Tracy Lawrence. Yeah. That's a fraud. Uh, the new EP is out. It's called Out Here In It. And check out the podcast and go watch Tracy Live, tracylawrence.com. Tracy, as a person, I'm a fan. And as a fan, I'm a fan. Thank you, my yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Oh, Tracy Lawrence, everybody. Nice Woo. job. Thank you much. Bobby Bones. Bobby Bones Show. Let's go.